Well, welcome back. It's now time for your midday sports. Now, former vice president of FIFA Trinidad, Austin Drac Warner, has lost the final battle in his fight against extradition to the United States on corruption charges. London's Privy Council dismissed Warner's lawyer's contention that the extradition request was unlawful, paving the way for the extradition proceedings in the Twin Island Republic's magistrate courts to continue. Warner had challenged the procedure of the extradition proceedings following the U.S. request on July 24, 2015, for him to face charges of wire fraud, racketeering, and money laundering, as well as the authority to proceed granted by the Attorney General in September that year, which gave the court the authority to begin the proceedings. Warner, who also served as CONCACAF president, was indicted in May 2015. U.S. prosecutors alleged that from as far back as 1990, he leveraged his influence and exploited his official positions for personal gain. Among other things, the 79-year-old former football administrator is accused of receiving five million U.S. dollars in bribes sent via more than two dozen separate wire transfers from 10 different shell companies to a Caribbean Football Union account he controlled at Republic Bank in Trinidad and Tobago to vote for Russia to host the 2018 World Cup. And locally, holders of the ISA Champions Cup, Clarendon College will take on Mona High in the quarterfinal round of the competition this Saturday at Sabina Park following Wednesday's draw. Clarendon, who are unbeaten in the Da Costa Cup this season, oppose a Craig Butler coached team that has lost only one game to date, which came against Kingston College last Saturday. That match is slated for 4 p.m. In the day's other game at the venue, former champions Kingston College oppose first time qualifiers Central High, and that comes up at 6.15. Over at Steads, a former champions Jamaica College will battle the Manning School at 4.15 in the curtain raiser in a repeat of their 2018 meeting. Manchester High take on St. Andrew Technical. Now to cricket, Jamaica and West Indies vice captain Jermaine Blackwood will resume on 42 along with Jason Holder and even 50 on day two of their three day warm up match against the New South Wales 11 at Cambria. The West Indians electing to bat reached the stumps at 297 for five. This was in large part to a 133 run opening stand between captain Craig Brathwaite 75 and Shamar Brooks 56. Holder's 50 is from 79 balls with 10 fours, while Blackwood is 42 from 141 balls, inclusive of four fours. Another Jamaican in Kruma Bonner made 15, while Raymond Reefer and Carl Mears contributed 21 and 17, respectively. Guyanese batsman Tejaran Chandapal was unable to bat due to illness. The West Indians are using the encounter as preparation for their two-test series against Australia, which begins on November 30 in Perth. And the Jamaica Scorpions will look to make their first regional Super 50 final since 2017 when they take on the Ghana Harpy Eagles in the second semi-final today at the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium in Antigua. The Scorpions have lost just two of their six games in the competition so far and have won their last three, two of which came via the Duckworth Lewis method. Bowling has been the strength of the Scorpions so far with Dennis Bolai leading the charge with 12 wickets from four games, which puts him third on the list. Nicholson Gordon with 10 and Javor Royal 9 are the other Scorpion bowlers among the leading wicket takers in the competition. However, no Scorpion batter has scored a century with Brandon King and Captain Rothman Powell, the two players in the top 10 list for run scorers. King is currently sixth on the run scoring chart with a 261, while Powell is 10th on 216 runs. The match bows off at 1 p.m. Jamaica time. Meanwhile, Trinidad and Tobago Red Force booked their place in the final of the CWI Super 50 Cup after defeating Barbados Pride by 12 runs in a high-scoring semi-final contest at the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium on Wednesday evening. The Red Force first posted 312 for 6 after being sent to bat. They were led by a century from Captain Nicholas Perrin, who cracked 111 from 82 balls. His knock included 5 fours and 8 sixes. He also shared in a 147-run fourth-wicket partnership with Amir Jangu, who made 81. Darren Bravo also contributed 54 and Akilo Sain at 42. Shamar Springer took 4 for 64 for the Pride. Now in pursuit, despite an unbeaten century from Russian Primus, the Pride came up short at 302 for 8 of their 50 overs. Primus slammed 130 of 79 balls, including 10 fours and 9 sixes. 
Jonathan Carter also made 45, Nicholas Curtin 35, and Akeem Jordan 33. Pacer Shannon Gabriel was the pick of the Red Force Bowlers. He took four for 43. And that's it for your Midday Sports Report. Ashane, it's back to you. Thanks, Renardo. And that's the Midday News. I'm Ashane Masters. Join us at 7 for primetime news. On behalf of the news sports and production teams, have a good afternoon.